Lots of us, myself included, are guilty of copying our favourite pros, but sometimes there's equipment out there that is far better suited to the riding we actually do and is designed for us rather than uber flexible skin suited up pros. This is nowhere more true than when it comes to endurance bikes, but they do have a bit of a reputation for being cumbersome and heavy machines. This brand new Endure Race is, according to Canyon, arguably the fastest endurance road bike ever made. Is this the bike that we should all be riding? Let's go check it out. Eagle-eyed viewers might have already noticed that this is the brand new CFR model, which claims to offer improved aerodynamics, increased tire clearance, has some funky hidden frame storage that we'll see in a minute, and the adjustable handlebars off the air road. It's both the Endure CFR and CF SLX endurance bikes that have been revamped, and these are at the very top of the Endurace line. As the name suggests, these are bikes designed for fast endurance riding, such as those multi-hour weekend club runs. The geometry is more relaxed than you'll find on the ultimate road bike, but more aggressive than on the Grail or Grizzle gravel bikes. Canyon says that the new bikes offer both comfort and speed, which sounds good to us. Here's everything you need to know, along with our initial ride impressions of the new bikes, and in particular, this Canyon CFR with Shimano Di2. So, what's new? Well, the handlebar, that's borrowed from the air road. I say it's new, but the CP0018 Aero Cockpit, a catchy name I know, has previously been found on the air road Aero road bike. This is the first time that you've been able to get this width adjustable bar on an Endurace though, and it clearly shows Canyon's desire to make the bike faster. There's no wishy-washy claimed watt saving, but it is a pretty neat solution with all the benefits of an integrated bar and stem combo, but maintaining some adjustability. 15 millimeters of height, in fact, in five mil increments and 40 mil of width adjustment. Then there's the CP0018's party piece. Say you wanna take your new Endurace on holiday. You're gonna to have to put it in a box and that can be a pain in the ass. Well, with these dropped sections of the bars, actually unbolt using the bolts underneath and then fold up, tidy. Love it or hate it, internal bike storage is continuing its seemingly unstoppable takeover of all bikes. And the updated Enduro CFR and CF SLX are Canyon's first road bikes to offer storage within the frame. It's not in the down tube like on the Specialized Diverge or Trek de Marne. Instead, it's in the top tube under this lid. Let's see what's hiding. Ooh. So you pull this out and there's this kind of neoprene condom. It's stuck. There we go. Apparently it's got all the essentials in, which include a ratchet. Oh, that's quite nice actually. That's very nice. Got eight adjustable heads apparently. That's enough for most bolts. Oh, this one, I know what this is. It's a CO2 canister. Make sure you take that out before you go on a plane. What else have we got? Oh, tire levers. And then in the bottom, we've got, oh, that's where all the bits live, eight bits. Now, I don't think you're gonna be winning any world records for puncture changes using anything in there, but it does hide it out the way. How does this go back on? There we go. Rather disappointingly, you don't actually get the tools with the bike. You have to buy the bundle separately. You do get the neoprene sleeve though. So yeah, and it does do a really good job of preventing any rattling. It does hide it out the way and it means you don't have to run a ugly saddle bag that might obscure a light. And it means you can keep your pockets free for all manner of foods for all those endurance rides you're going on. Also new is increased tire clearance. It's a new bike in 2023, so you won't be too surprised to hear that Canyon has increased the frame and fork spacing to allow 35 mil wide tires. That's the same as the lower tier Endure CF that launched last year. The Endure is certainly more capable now, thanks to the extra clearance. Ready for rough roads and smooth dirt excursions, if that's the terrain on your doorstep. Look, I've got the tires dusty because I'm an adventurer. Also, my pedals got really grubby. They got absolutely filthy. That was because I went for a wee in a hedge. Is that a 32? It doesn't say on it. They come with 30 mil tires on the front and 32 mil on the rear. 
that's quite a nice endurance setup really ideal for our crap uk roads the rims are fairly modern 22 mil internal width and are featured across the enduro cfr and cf slx range and naturally all the tires and rims are tubeless ready good work Canyon also says they've improved the aerodynamics, which might not be top of your priorities list on an endurance bike, but Canyon is keen to point out that aero optimization is a benefit for all riders, and the longer you ride for, the more it matters. Yeah, it's more aero. To be fair, no one's wanted a bike less aero, and it, it looks quite cool. I quite like this shaping around the rear wheel. A little bit of a little bit of a lump for the for the front mech there. Um, it's got quite bladed forks. I think it looks good. It's a nice balance of classic lines and aero optimization. It's the front end of the bike with surfaces first exposed to the wind where the biggest gains are to be made. On the Endurance CFR, there's quite a clean front end. So you've got no cables showing, you've got this new cockpit and uh, this nice bit here that we often see on aero bikes. All of that, according to Canyon, reduces the frontal area and they've done lots of CF the computational fluid dynamic testing to prove all of that. So yeah, all of those changes have resulted in a seven watt saving at 45 kph, which is not insignificant, but realistically the bike, you probably won't go 45 kph very often. I can't remember the last ride I averaged 45 kph on. A motorbike ride. Right then, geometry because geometry is important and it is the main thing that sets this apart from something like the Ultimate. The Endurace bikes are designed for comfort and are a little more relaxed than those of Canyon's full-on race bikes. Taking size medium as a reference, the Endurace possesses a 27mm higher stack and 15mm shorter reach, resulting in a less aggressive position. If you want to know all about the ratios, then head over to the Road CC website because Matt has gone into a lot of detail and there's all sorts of geometry tables. And if you enjoy that sort of thing, then you will absolutely love it. Basically, the result of this approach is a more, what Canyon called an open fit. And that enables the rider to sit slightly more upright, reducing pressure on the lower back, core and shoulders. That's not quite as aero, but for most of us, it is more comfortable. And it means that if you buy a race bike, you'll have to have like a chimney out the top of spacers to get it into a sensible position. This one, because it's got a deep head tube, you can then run less spacers and have it looking less silly, which is good. It's a very unsilly looking bike, isn't it? Both of the new bikes, the CFR and the Endura CF SLX come in eight frame sizes from 3XS to 2XL. And it's designed from little people at 152 centimeters to over two meters tall. So everyone should be able to find a size for them. Oh, and the little bikes roll on 650B wheels for a more consistent handling across all the frame sizes. Back here, we've got the VCLS2 comfort seat post, which is obviously a, it's been a feature of the Endurace for quite some time. And it's great news that they kept it as far as we're concerned. When we reviewed it individually, we said that the post adds a good dollop of seated comfort without too much weight penalty, and we'll stand by that. It uses an ingenious leaf spring arrangement to give a more comfortable ride, a much more noticeable improvement than most other comfort enhancing seat posts. The two carbon blades, I suppose you'd call them, can flex up to 20 mil. Well, that's a decent amount. Ah, one thing that it doesn't have is mudguard mounts and that might disappoint a fair few uk riders not much else to say about that other than sorry i say sorry it's not really my job to say sorry i'll try and get a written apology from canyon that's an apache so what's the difference between this top of the range cfr model and the cf slx well not a lot they share many features all the models offer the top tube storage, the width adjustable Canyon CP0018 aero cockpit, and the S15 VC L012 thing seat post. The frame sets are made differently though. The frame and forks on the CFR model are created using the highest grades of carbon and precision manufacturing processes to deliver class leading stiffness to weight, according to Canyon. Tipping the scales 100 grams below 
the Endura CF SLX. So if weight is your priority, performance, then get the CFR model. If not, then you can save some money and go for the SLX. The CFR is available like this one with DI2 or SRAM Red AXS, um, or for 500 pounds more, I believe, you can have the Campagnolo wireless, the new, the new stuff. So some weights. This one has a weight of 7.3 kilos, same for the SRAM build and an RRP of dun, 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 £8,999. Um, obviously, hell of a lot of money, um, but it is less than some ultra premium Durace equipped bikes. The Tarmac SL8, for example, costs three grand more, £12,000. And to be honest, this is probably the better bike on most UK roads if you're not racing. Luckily, there is bikes for a lot less. The, uh, the SLX7 model, uh, they start at about £4,000, 3999 and that comes with 105 Di2. So you're getting almost all the same performance and top tube storage and stuff like that for a lot less. Sensible money's probably on that one. So then, we've been doing some riding ahead of its launch and we will have a full review coming soon from Stu. But in the meantime, here are our initial thoughts. It feels very well balanced, making it what we'd call a real world road bike. It's not designed for a wind tunnel, it's designed for nitty gritty UK lanes. And that's a really good thing. Uh, with this 7.3 kilo weight, it's, uh, it's surprisingly light. It climbs quite well. It's stiff around the bottom bracket, which is good. But you do get some serious compliance. You've got 20 mil of travel from the seat post. You got a 32 mil tire on the back and then some frame compliance as well, which as long as you're running sensible tire pressures and tubeless, then uh, yeah, it's a really quite a plush ride. That does mean that it doesn't necessarily feel as lightning electric quick as some of the top tier race bikes out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's any slower. Maybe in a lab on a rolling road or something, on a treadmill, one of those cycling treadmills, Maybe 23 mil and super stiff is quicker, but all my quickest times are comes on bikes that are far more comfortable. With this built-in compliance, yes, it's a word we band around like nobody's business. And wide tires, they might seem like a bit of a trend. On UK roads, if you can save yourself getting beaten up on your sporty for your ride at the weekend, then you will go faster for longer. And that is why comfort is key. What do you think of the bike? Let us know in the comment section below. Would you consider it or will you be sticking to a race bike? If you like this content, then please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. If you do buy one though, change the bottle cages or use Canyon's bottles because these are absolutely useless with, with normal bottles. That's not staying on, is it? <laughs>